battle ground between the Israelites and the Philistines, yet the Israelites were still defeated. To the point where the two sons of Eli were killed, Hophni and Phinehas. And that is because before engaging in that battle, they failed to ask God to renew their spirits. And that was why later part of that passage, the word of God says, that was the moment that a wife of the, one of the sons of Eli called the situation, he coupled, where is thy glory, Lord? Because of lack of renewal, it is now a time of renewal. You were loaded up. You've been charged up. Yesterday, the day before yesterday, since the beginning of this program, since the cross of a night into this new year, you've been spiritually charged up. But do not take that charge if you do not once again connect back to the source to get your spiritual batteries refilled. Trust me when I say to you, it's going to go flat. And that is why you need a renewal. The grace of renewal. That God should renew you. Talk to God now that he should renew you. Jesus, I am here. I need you to renew me. Renew me, Jesus. Renew me, Lord. Renew this assembly. Renew this fellowship. Let your powers once again be felt. Grant us, O God, the grace of renewal. Yes, Jesus, renew us, Lord. Talk to God about renewal. Let him renew you. You have been imparted on. But you need that grace to be renewed. You've been imparted on. You need a grace of new re renewal. So that everything that comes out of you will be loaded with power. And by that power, you will begin to touch lives positively. And begin to display goodness. That you shall become an embodiment of goodness. Talk to God about the grace of renewal. Renew us, Jesus. Spirit of God, renew us, Lord. Renew us, Lord. Renew us, Lord. Jesus, renew us. Renew me. Renew me. Father, renew me. Oh, Lord. When thou shalt come from above, O oh my Father, Father, renew me, renew me, renew me. Sing it out aloud and say to God, He shall renew you. Let Him renew you. It is a moment of renewal. It is a period of renewal. When renew your church, O God. Renew the power of this assembly. Renew this fellowship. Renew your children. Renew your sons and daughters. Renew your priests, O God. Renew your servants. Renew every living soul under the roof of this building. Jesus, we beg you to renew us. Spirit of God, renew us. Father God in heaven, renew us. Renew everything that is connected to us. Renew our families, sir God. Renew the vows we made. Oh, Jesus, renew us once again. Shall come from, from my blood, my father, oh my father, brother, in different ways. I have tasted of your love, Jesus. You are so real, you are your great God. In different ways, I have tasted of your love, oh, 
Jesus, you are to reload. You are a great God. Ah, Jesus. In different ways, I have tasted of your love. Jesus, you are to reload. You are a great God. In different ways, I have tasted of your love. Jesus, you are to reload. You are a great God. So many ways. Jesus, I have tasted of your power. Yes, Jesus. God, you are so real. You are too real, Lord Jesus. You are a great God. That is why you are the God so yesterday, today, and forever. You will continue to be the same. I have tasted of your glory. And that is why you are no man, Jesus, Jesus because you, you are, are so real. real. Express, you oh God, real, real your reality God. in this ground. Express Be yourself, so Jesus, in this platform. Manifest yourself, oh God, on this ground. Let this holy ground once again be a witness and a testimony to your expression. Let it be a platform to your manifestation. Because in different ways, you, Jesus, you have expressed, oh Lord, your love. Oh, Jesus, we worship you. We glorify your name, Jesus. We adore you. Yes, Lord. As you lift up your hands, you sing with me. Oh, Jesus. We glorify you. Today I'm in need. Yes, Lord. Holy yes, Ghost Jesus. fire. Fall on me. Uh-huh. Yes, today's God. Today I'm in need. Holy Spirit, come down. Holy Ghost power. Holy Spirit, come Fall down. On me. Everybody connect yourselves to the place I of worship yes, right today. now. Connect yourselves to the place of worship. Connect yourselves to the place of power. Begin to talk to God and begin to say, Jesus, I am here. Holy Ghost, I am here. Father, I am here. Do with me as you so please. Today I'm in need. Yes, Jesus. Holy Ghost, power. Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent ah. God, excellent God, I bow before you. Oh Jesus, glorious God, beautiful, hey, beautiful. Worship by your feet. I bow before your throne. Bow before your throne. You are the glorious God. You are the glorious God. I bow. I bow before your throne. Worship at your feet. Worship at your feet. I bow before your throne. You are the glorious God. Your name is Alpha. Omega, Omega is your name. Omega. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah. Mighty is your name, Jesus. Mighty. Oh, Jesus, that is your name. Omega. Yes, Lord. What was he remarking? What was he remarking? Oh, mama, 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 Mamma, 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 Mamma,
takes his place with decrees so that he will increase. God is about to take his place. Let him take his place. Just open yourselves up to him. Let him take his place. Let him take his place. Let him take his place. Let him take, place. Let him take over this place. Let hearts be transformed and hearts be changed. Let hearts be renewed once again. By the sons and daughters of God be revived. By the power and the act of goodness, Jesus, we ask you to prevail. Come and have your way, Lord. Have your way in the lives of your people. Have your way in the lives of your church. Have your way in this assembly, Jesus. We beg you to have your way. Come, Lord Jesus, and prevail. And by the authority of your word of God, as you take over, Jesus, may lives be sanctified. May lives be blessed. May lives be consecrated. May lives be renewed. May lives be dedicated. I speak, O oh God, and I call upon you for the grace of regeneration. I call upon you for the grace of renewal. I call upon you for the grace of rekindlement. Oh, Jesus of Inigwe, of Inigwe, come and prevail. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Show mercy to us, Lord. Show mercy, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' name we pray. Preface number four says, Our praises add nothing to the greatness of God. Listen, it adds nothing to the greatness of God. 
But our praises can actually move God out of mercy and compassion to bring answers to your prayers. It may not add anything to who God is. And as a matter of fact, it doesn't. But one of the things that our praises does is that it moves God with mercy. It moves God to show compassion. It moves God so do the things that you ask him to do. And that is why praises matters a lot. If you have your Bibles while you are standing, turn with me to the gospel passage of Luke chapter 10. I urge every one of us to please be on our feet. Luke chapter 10. Are you there? Are you there? Luke chapter 10. Please be on your feet. Bear in mind that this is a battleground. For as long as you have come here, the battle line is drawn. So it is either you are ready for war or at the end of the day, the devil will use you to play the game of chess. But the devil will not see any of us to use to play chess in Jesus' name. So if that amen is so real, let us be on our feet, please. Luke chapter 10. Verses 25 through to 37. From verses 25 through to 37. If you look at the blueprint of this program on uh, the power of goodness, you will not find this passage in any of the, those biblical texts given. Those biblical texts given from that manuscript, the original manuscript, are for your personal reflection. But for the interests and the spirit of this program, in the spirit of today's topic, we are taking Luke 10, 25 to 37. Are you there? From the version of my Bible, the Word of God said, Behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read? And he answered Jesus, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Why I'm not surprised at this response is because there is every likelihood that this lawyer is a Jew. And why I say he's a Jew is because this love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself is what we describe in technical terms as the Shema of the Israelites. In other words, the creed of the people of Israel as you will find in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6. And so, when he was done saying all of this, he, Jesus now said to him, You answered right. Do this and you will live. And this is where we need to guard against self-righteousness and self-justification. If you read verse 29, hear what the, man, the, the Bible said. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? You know, no, say, don't carry hook. Holy self for neck. Now Jesus, he has this kind of question. He don't tell you simple. He don't tell you, okay, go do as you talk. Make you respect yourself, just walk out, jeje. You say you won't go extra. You want to go extra. Okay, I will take you extra. And Jesus replied after he asked him, who is my neighbor? Jesus replied. He did not say your neighbor is this. Neither did he say your neighbor is this. 
Jesus started by saying, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest who ordinarily, by the virtue of his calling, was meant to save this man. A priest saw him. He passed by on the other side. A Levite, likewise, when he came to the place and saw him, he passed by also on the other side. But in verse 33, the word of God says, But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. And when he saw him, what did he do? He had compassion. What did your version of the Bible say? What was it that what is it that the good news version said? Sorry, sorry. He took pity. Another another version. His heart was filled with pity. All right. Now, if you read verse 34, the Bible says, and he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil. And why? This is what we call in our modern day language, first aid treatment before taking him to the hospital. Then he set him on his own beasts, that is on his donkey, and brought him to an inn, to a clinic, and took care of him. And the next day, he took out two denarii, that is like 200,000 naira, and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. And now, this is the answer that Jesus gave to that man. Who is my neighbor? Jesus now said in verse 36. Which of these three do you think proved to be neighbor to the man who fell on the ground beaten by robbers? And the man said, the one who showed mercy on him. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus. Be seated, everybody. Thank you for standing. But when you begin to enjoy the blessing now, I will not be there. Everybody tell your neighbor and say, go and do likewise. I know here now. Reverend Fathers, make you tell yourself, because now now escape this thing, so now now no greed do. So make you tell yourself, go and do likewise. Everybody tell each other again and say, go and do likewise. <clears throat> All right. If you ask me, I want to say to us all that um, today's message titled The Power of Goodness is more or less like a part two of yesterday's message. Because when an impartation is being given you, one of the things that Jesus will mandate will be go into the world and do same. You have received without charge. So go into the world and give without charge. That having been said, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to begin on this note. That the biggest tragedy that can ever befall a man is not the tragedy of death. But it is the tragedy of a wasted years. The biggest tragedy you don't reduce my volume now. Oh, okay. Nah. Nah. Now you want to make me shout. I still get programs plenty for front. So not be only this church that they do program. I need to save my voice. All right. Cool. So let him give me small volume. Be cool. But I wish you no vex, eh? So like I was saying, the biggest tragedy that can ever befall a man is the tragedy of 
wasted years. When person just the life just the wastes. Just the wastes. Just the wastes. Just the wastes. Waste. But thanks be to God that yesterday we were we, we, we actually prayed for impartation. Now, having said this, I want each and every one of us to ask ourselves the following questions. What is the purpose why you are created? Why are you created? Simple catechism of the Catholic Church will say, we are created because God wants us to know him, to love him, to serve him, and to be happy with him until forever in the next. But is that all? Is that the essence and the whole reason why you are created? Not at all. What is the reason why you are created? What is your mission here on earth? Remember, we are talking about the power of goodness. So, we need to ask ourselves, what is our mission on earth? And that was why I started by saying that the biggest tragedy that we befall any man is the tragedy of wasted time or wasted years. When you are living this life and everything that is increasing about you, around you, is nothing but your age. But at the end of the day, nothing is happening. Nothing substantive is happening around you and to the people connected to you. So, the question now is, what is your mission on earth? Say, for instance, you die today. God forbid it though. And you now appear before the throne of the Most High. And God says to you, were you able to accomplish the mission or the assignment I gave you before you came to me? What will you say? If God gives you now, a, uh, uh, um, for instance, a plain sheet loaded with um, boxes and he needs you to check those boxes. At the end of the day, if you check those boxes, will you say to yourself, haven't checked these boxes? This is work well done. Every, each and every one of us here need to figure out our mission while we are here. We need to figure out why we are here. But to be able to figure out the reason of our existence and the reason why we are here. I need each and every one of us to understand that existence alone is not enough. Because so many of us are existing without living. Existence alone is not enough. But it is more than enough if you live past beyond existing. How do I mean? This is us now existing. If we die, we cease to exist. But now when you leave, it simply means that you are actually having an impact on someone, on somebody somewhere. This is what it means to leave. A life of value. A life that has texture. A life that people will see and, will, and they will say, yes, indeed, this man lived well. This woman lived well. This is what it means to exist and what it means to live. And that is why believers must understand that Jesus didn't come to make us religious. So those of you who are thinking that Jesus came into the world to make us more spiritual. No, Jesus did not come to the world to make us more religious. But Jesus came into the world to make us alive. He came into the world to make us live. John chapter 10 verse 10b. You will see one of them, his maxim. And as a matter of fact, in the spirit of that maxim, he walked in it. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. And if that is true about one of the primary mission of Jesus, you will discover that in doing so, love became the language and the religion of Jesus. I have come that they may have life. Whoever it is I meet, I touch, I bless. If you listen to the gospel reading of today, taken from Matthew, is it Matthew or Mark? Ma sorry, Mark chapter 4. The Bible talks about the man whom Jesus healed of paralysis. And that was because 
the words or the lines of scripture said Jesus was moved with pity. That Jesus did all of that. You want to translate compassion? You want to translate mercy? You want to translate pity? You know, and give it another interpretation. It boils down to one thing. And that one thing is love. That is the religion of Jesus. Love. That is his language. My dearly beloved friends in Christ. If love is his language. Jesus saw through racial differences. And displayed love upon every call and encounter. set a path for us to follow. If he showed us a pattern to follow, if it becomes the standard we are all looking at by doing good and in return, he's saying we should also do same. Come follow me. We should also do the things that he does. We should also follow that same path and we should also live by that standard. Then that means the call, the clarion call to do good becomes very paramount. It becomes very paramount. It's not an option. Trust me when I say to you, it's not an option. So the question now is, beloved friends in Christ, in our world that is so broken and damaged, how much good are we able to impact upon this world? How much good are we able to impact upon this world? You know, there are so many of us who believe that when you come to church and you kabash your skendi from morning up to night and you go back home, okay, now everything goes well. As a matter of fact, I have seen people who are very, very religious, who pray, 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 but who are as wicked as the devil. Are you following what I'm saying? Who are so wicked? As a matter of fact, their heart is so numb. When it comes to matters of sensitivity, when it comes to matters of arms giving, when it comes to matters of showing mercy, trust me when I say to you, they have no iota of mercy. But these same people, we come to church and disturb the peace of God and say, show me mercy, show me mercy, show me mercy. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy... you are defiled, you are not, oh Jesus Christ. The act of goodness. I do not know from what dimension I will have to take this subject. But trust me, I will be speaking holistically, however, here and there, on the act of goodness. The power of goodness. When we become so insensitive. Look at Nigeria today. Look at how this country is. We know they cause this country. We go to pray for this country. We go to bless this country. We go to pray for them. We go to bless the country. But look at what is happening in this country. The number of churches in this country is more than enough to change the state of this nation. But why is it that the spiritual climate of these churches cannot even have an impact on its own country called Nigeria? That is because the heart of man is so numb to the act of goodness. We pray, we are so religious, but we are not spiritual. And there are so many persons who will tell you that we not go to church, but trust me when I say to you, those people are way, way far better than those who, are, who even go to church. Then at the end of the day, we say, oh no, you didn't do this, you didn't do this. You, look, let me tell you, at the end of the day, God is not going to judge us by church attendance. I am not trying to say you should no longer come to church anymore. Father Wizzy, this is not a bad market for you. You understand what I'm saying? This is not a bad market for you. Even for Aonia, it's not a bad market for you. But this is a wake-up call. All I'm trying to say here is, arise, O sleeping giant. Arise, O sleeping giant. You think it is by church attendance? You dare legion of Mary. You dare charismatic. You dare sacred hearts. You dare for service and Nepal. You dare altar server. You dare for worship team. You dare pastoral council. You dare finance. One person. But at the end of the day, nobody wicked reach you for the church. One person. One person. So what is the use coming to the church anyways?
when they begin to preach here, the priest is preaching. You are just looking at the priest, and all you are just waiting for is let the priest say, Oh, at this point, oh, that today you will listen to his voice, harden not your heart. But the more the priest keep preaching, the more your hearts keep getting hardened. The more your hearts keep getting hardened. Tell me, is it that the prayers of this, uh, our prayers can no longer touch the heart of God anymore? Tell me why. Is it that our prayer is now an abomination unto his name? Hear what the first reading says in that book of 1 Samuel chapter 4. They brought the ark of the covenant at the battleground. And the Israelites started shouting, Yeah, he is here. Odogu is here. Ebubedike is here. Now he will conquer and fight against our enemies. But now the commander, the commander of the Philistines told the Philistines and said to them, Look, do not be afraid of their screaming and their shouting. However, we know that their God is so powerful because it was this same God who actually punished the Egyptians while they were trying to cross the Red Sea. And he brought their own whole future, everything to real. But you know what? There is no harm trying. And guess what happened? When they did try, what happened? The Bible said in the course of that battle, they killed more Israelites, including the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas. Hophni and Phinehas. To the point where it didn't even stop there. The people even had the mind, they had the gods to even capture the Ark of the Covenant. What a shame. What a shame. What a shame that you have a bunch of believers who come to church. They look at the sanctuary of God and the devil is seated right in the middle. And here where the devil sits, the devil is just pointing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Let me see if you're going to enjoy your blessings today. And yet, this bunch of believers, right in the presence of God, instead of them to pray, well, maybe one manifestation is happening somewhere. Because the devil already knows that the ground is so hot. And so, him, somebody begins to manifest. Instead of you to pray yourself out, you begin now to look at the person and begin to shout Holy Ghost fire. What do you know is happening here? What do you know is happening here? It is not every manifestation under the influence of the Holy Spirit that is evil and satanic. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Hello? Good. So, why is it a problem that every day we keep praying, it looks like corruption, the wings of corruption keep getting, it just keep growing and demonology is walking on her two feet. What has happened to the church? Maybe this is a time we all need to begin to say, maybe this is the age of Ichabod. And we begin to ask ourselves, where is the glory of the Lord? Where? Where is the glory of the Lord? One man, they get billions, trillions of naira and dollars. And under the nose of this man, the gates men are looking so shabby and tattered. What has happened to your conscience? Have you forgotten the Bible says in his wisdom and in his riches, man lacks wisdom and he's like the beast that is about to be destroyed. Have you forgotten that passage of scripture? What has happened to us all? What has happened to the hearts of man that has grown so numb and dead? By the day, the act of inhumanity to man keeps increasing and no one gives a hood about it. No one gives a hood about it. This one they do evil, this one they do evil, this one they do evil, this one they do evil. As a matter of fact, it can't be like they don't they carry the evil myself, they do Ogueshi, they compete. Which one, which person evil pass? Which one no, oh, no pass? Which one pass? Which one no pass? That is the world we live in here today, unfortunately. But one thing that this today's topic is addressing is, it is not enough to say, out of my belly flow the rivers of living water. But it is more than enough that the rivers that flow from the living water have a positive impact by an act of good on whoever it is that you touch. Amen, somebody. Are you following what I'm saying? So now, the word of God here now calls us to now begin to 
um, um, have some deep thinking about all of this. Deep thinking about all this. So, if you want to begin to understand. Word that I consider very fluid. It is so fluid, you know. So fluid because the word good is subject to so many interpretations. It means a lot of things to so many people. What may be good for you may not be good for me. And what may be good for me may not also be good for you. But irrespective of this individual understanding and differences about the word good or the subject good, we need to have what we want to call a common ground on which goodness should be understood. There are some persons who refer or we can refer to something that is high of quality as being good. Someone that is virtuous can be called good. It can also mean to be morally upright. When you are morally upright, it means that you are good. Now, at this point in time, even when you say that you, uh, it, it can mean someone that is doing something, you are impacting something on somebody. Now, if you are meant to communicate that language, say, oh, well, you, you, I, 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 I just want to say to you, well done for doing that good thing. Now, that act could be an act of good. Someone's ability at something could also be good. While I was studying in the course of my study, Something very funny I came across. As an adjective, the word good now. This is what Encanta Dictionary made me understand. The word good alone as an adjective. The Encanta Dictionary listed 28 different uses of this word. So this may be also a situation where each and every one of us need to understand that this word good could be subjective and could also be relative. Hence, the question is, can it truly be defined? Maybe yes, maybe not. What is the criteria for saying that this something is good or this action is good? Maybe we do not know. We may not have a universal instrument to, for that measurement. But trust me, if you ask me, I will tell you that one criteria for us to say this is good and this is not good is if we remove one of the letter O. And what is that? If we remove one of the letter O, what are you left with? Bam, that is the criteria. From good, equivalent, you remove one letter O. You just get God. That could be the criteria. And if God is good, then this is what it means if it is God. Because at every now and then we always hear that God is good all the time and all the time God is good. God is the best. God is this. God is that. Everything that God, that is connected to God is good. And so, that being the case, God in return commands that we be good and we should also do good. And so what does it mean? It therefore means to say the word G-O-O-D simply means giving of ourselves daily. Giving of ourselves daily. When you are engaged in the act of giving of self daily, what you are doing is you are not only dis making yourself disposable, uh, sorry, making yourself available, you are also making sure that you are giving not just your presence, you are giving your time, you are giving your talent, you are also giving your treasure. Giving off of ourselves daily. But there are so many of us who will not do this. The book of Ephesians in chapter 4 verse 32 helps us to understand how it means or what it means when we say giving off of ourselves daily. St. Paul speaking to the Ephesians said something like this. Be kind and be compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other just as in Christ, God has forgiven you. So what it means here is that we should see others with the eyes of our hearts. Show mercy to them. Forgive them if they wrong us. 
Be kind to them. Show compassion to them. And this is where we can now begin to look for the Beatitudes of Jesus. My first definition and understanding of the Beatitudes of Jesus is two words. Be attitude. In other words, attitudes that should be. This is what the Beatitudes is. Blessed are those who show mercy, for mercy shall be shown unto them. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. These are attitudes that should be. But why is it also difficult to live out this attitude? Why is it so difficult? If it is not revenge, it is re retributive justice. If it is not retributive justice, it is malice. If it is not malice, it is unbridled hatred. If it is not unbridled hatred, it is selfishness. If it is not selfishness, it is greed. If it is not greed, it is something else. The natural laws of man is, now, is no longer seen as natural. And trust me when I say to you that these natural laws are, are what the Bible gives in the book of Exodus in chapter 20. The ten commandments of man. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. Do not kill. Is that not a natural law? That is a natural law. Do not steal. Is that not a natural law? That is a natural law. And let me tell us something about this natural law. When the Bible says, thou shalt not, the emphasis is not on the shall not, but the priority is given on thou shall. Because when you do the thou shall, the shall not will not come into existence. Are you following what I'm saying? Hello? So, at this point in time, believers need to understand here that if we are talking about the act of goodness, we need to look at other people with the eyes of our heart. Feel compassion towards them by making personal touch through reaching out generously to them. Haven't said all of this. If you still remember what we talked about yesterday, I did say something about the principle of double effects. You remember? Did you remember? I said something about principle of double effects. I said something about the, um, the double effect when I talked about drink and dispense. Can I get a bottle of water, please? Don't worry. Don't worry. If it is way too far. It's not far. Just be very fast. Then get me a bowl. Get me a bowl. I want to show these people something. Hello. Hello. I am. Today I'm not going to take it. No worry. Today we'll go just pray away. I'm not going to take it. I'll go so finish. We are the water day. Give me this. Hello. What am I holding? This is a bottle of water, right? It's got water in it, isn't it? All right. Come. This bottle of water represents every human being. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. It represents every human being. So now, in the course of principle of double effects, see what the body water does, what a human being does. You drink, you dispense. This bowl represents the world. Every day, there must be a drop of goodness coming from you into the world. And if this bottle water remains this way, in the next six months, there are some waters that actually expire. Right? Those of you who are science, who are, who are in the field of science, there are some waters that actually expire. So, if this water is one of those waters in that category, what happens is, after six months, or even more, the bottled water becomes useless. The bowl now becomes the earth. 
and a human being here out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water and it goes in there and what you have deposited in this earth is an act of goodness because here there is someone who is thirsty here there is someone who is hungry here there is someone who is naked here there is someone who is homeless here there is someone who is sick here there is someone who died and who needs to be buried here there is someone who is unjustly locked up in prison and kept behind the bars here there is someone who is suffering from some kind of colossal injustice waiting for a voice to speak for him or her in other words to become the voice of the voiceless this person all of this you find here on the earth here there are those too whom in their activities have actually engaged in acts of romances with the devil but then a drop of water and an impact on their lives will change the narrative and change the situation here you have a lot of people who are so heartbroken and they have found they have vowed that as long as they live they will never love but then when you become that bottle of water dropped inside this bowl you begin to transform that person gradually it is only in the place of God to convert people it is not in the place of man to change people but one thing that we can do is that we can actually have positive impact on people we can actually leave what we want to call legacies that will speak after us. And when I'm talking about people, I'm not just referring to your biological family. Go outside your own radar. Go outside your comfort zone. Go outside the box. And hear what it says. Once you begin to drop this act of goodness gradually, you keep coming, you keep coming, you keep coming, until it empties what happens at that point in time at the sunset of your life God will say to you my son you have done well come to me and if you read the text of Matthew in chapter 25 hear what God will say you may go now God will say oh when I was hungry you gave me food to eat when I was thirsty you gave me water to drink when you when I was this you visited me when I was in prison, you came to me. When I was homeless, you gave me a home. And I will begin to ask him, when did I see you to do all of these things? And what is it that the Bible said? Whoever it is you may have done this to, you have done it unto me. Because that is the act of goodness. And now God will say, come into my kingdom, you blessed child of mine. But to the other one, it's going to be, when did I see you? I, I, I didn't see you to do this. 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 I just did it my own way. So why will you blame me? And you know what God will say? Depart from me, you walk out in iniquity. I pray for, so, for all of us gathered here, not just for someone. Let it never be said that at the sunset of our lives when we appear at the throne of judgment before our creator, God will look at us and begin to say to us, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. May God forbid it in the name of Jesus. So that is why the call to being good becomes very, very paramount. So, taking into cognizance the principle of double effects, drink and dispense, consume and distribute, receive and give. Our primary passage now tells us to be good Samaritans. Why good Samaritans? We have priests who saw that man in pain and instead of coming to help that man, the priests walked away. We have Levites who in the same rank and the office of the priests who saw that man in pain bleeding to death and instead of coming around to help the man, 
they walked away. But let me tell you this. I do not know. I am not sure. I want to talk about the human Jesus now, not the Jesus God. I want to talk about the human Jesus. Do you think if Jesus was to be alive or was to be in our midst, the human Jesus now, I'm not talking about the divine. Are you following me? Hello? Are you following what I'm saying? Do you think that if Jesus were to be in our midst right now, physically, don't you think that this same passage will be rewritten because of the things happening in the world? Don't you think it's going to be revised? I have seen where some people, they went out of their way wanting to help. And in the process of wanting to help, they were robbed. They were killed. They were kidnapped. You see why I talked about the hearts of man being insensitive? You see one of the reasons why I talked about the hearts of man growing so numb? You see why I talked about the act of inhuman to man? Most likely this passage might be reviewed. You are driving, you are driving for those men where we say their eye know the fishy uh, why for road. Why we wear fine skirts with a heely shoe and maybe with a spaghetti top. And you don't know whether this wine or spirit have been a normal human being. You just see, can you give me a handbag? Give me this, this small one. You, 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 see, you, see, you, you see wine. A, a, around 5 a.m. after you don't, come, you don't come up from club because she just hold her handbag like this. I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I your way is my way. Don't put people six, six feet into the ground. <laughs> Are you listening to what I'm saying? Your way is my way. And it don't chop. Chua, 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 chua. Your way is my way. Then in, you now locate the nearby hotel. For your mind now, you have seen a bush meet. You, should, you, you, you do not need to let go. So now you, you stop at the nearby hotel. And the next thing is um, you pay. Oh, yeah. Room. They say 30,000. Oh, yeah. Take, 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 take my card. Take my card. Take my card. Hey, sweetie, let's go up. You don't go up. He said, you say, oh yeah, go, go bath, come first. Go bath, come. Go bath, come. I do wait. When you bath, come, then I'll, I'll just go freshen up myself. Say, okay. You enter, finish. As you enter, you don't they come up for a bedroom. Waiting there, your waist now. Only towel, towel, towel. Only towel. Meanwhile, the ghost where you pick for rotting in a human being, don't they show in true color? You see caskets on top of bed. Boom, boom. I know people that this thing happened to not once, not twice, not three times. In a Saba. In a Saba. 2 a.m., 3 a.m. In the name of Sisieko. Sisieko, Sisieko, Sisieko. Before you know what thing they happen, they don't carry ghosts. Cops. Now, caskets on the bed. How about the ones that we convert and change to snake? How about the ones where we say you genuinely help, not necessarily because you want to sleep with them. You genuinely helped them because you stopped and you saw that maybe at that time of the night it was so ungodly. And now you ask them, where are you going to? Where are you headed? And now they tell you, okay, this is the direction I'm going to. And they call the name of the street. You now reason it that it's not too far from where you're going. Little did you know that she already, through her phone, doing chats, text message, have told her other gangs up front, stop this car. This car is coming. I'm with him. And you are just going. So, if you ask me, I will tell you that there is every likelihood that this might be reviewed. But that is not the case right now. The case is that even though I have painted this picture, it still does not deter any one of us from carrying out an act of goodness. Let us not hide under this platform. 
and begin to say that in trying to do good, it is no way, way, way not possible. No, why should I do good? I have seen a situation where somebody gave another person money. Money. This thing happened to me in one of the churches. I will not call around Agege, but I will not call the name of the parish. Then for that go know who, 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 who the parish I'm talking about. One rich man. Sometimes the poor people now will be the cause of a problem. Make I tell you not true. Poor people. You see poverty? Poverty is not something to admire. It is not some... Everybody say, I reject poverty. It is not something to admire. Because when you are poor, trust me, even the upstairs here, it gets where it go, go rich, eh? It go come deteriorate. It go come rotting. And everything you see up here is devil, 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 devil. Because of poverty mentality. Madam, you were poor. Now you go meet this man, or oh God help me. The man come look in pigeon hole, come come out some three clean uh, 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 1,000 naira notes and gave to you. You say, thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. You collected him. Not like you didn't collect. This man is, is, is in his SUV. And you, you now, um, the man drove off. The woman went home. And when she went home, she came for morning mass the following day. This thing happened in Agege. That was sometime last year, during the course of one of my ministration. The woman came to me and said, Father, please pray for me. I said, Madam, why now? Uh, what, what is the problem? He said, Father, one man, he gave me money. He, he gave this money where he gave me that yeah, yesterday. I did suspect that money. That man won't thief my destiny. <laughs> you will be saying you get poverty destiny. Now this kind of destiny, they won't thief. How I go there rich, I want thief destiny way poor. Hello? I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. I say, now nah, nah, she goes, Father, pray for me. This, they, uh, yesterday when I they sleep, as I close my eyes, Father, I just they see evil, evil, evil. Bear just they fly. Boo, boo, boo. Father, I, you don't say where I dream this kind of dream. Father, I beg, pray for me. Because I feel say, that money no pure. Now come look the woman. I said, Madam, now the thank you where you suppose they talk, they give that man this. You know, say if that man hear this thing where he say, they tell me so. Nothing will ever make that man, even if you they die, give you copper. Copper! That person will go out of him way to help you. Then see what you come begin to talk. I had to school that woman for a moment. And I'll say to that woman, you need to ask God for forgiveness. And even if you had that dream, why are you even attributing it to this man? And even if you also, if you feel that the money is not pure, what prevents you from coming to the altar of God? Now you've been given a gift. What stops you from going to the sanctuary of God? Kneeling before God and say, God, please purify this and let it be to my own benefit. And to, for whatever it is I'm going to use it for, let it, may my body, soul and spirit enjoy the fullness of this cash. What stops you from saying that kind of a prayer? And all you will tell me is, he wants if your destiny. Which destiny? And that is why believers must understand something very important. You need to understand something very important. Whatever you speak against, you can never attract it. One of the principles of the law of wealth is that you do not speak against wealth. You cannot speak against wealth and come here believing God to bless you with wealth. You cannot be envious of the riches of another man. And you come to church here and begin to say, God, please make me rich. No, there is no way it will ever happen because you are yet to understand the principles and the dynamics of wealth, not to even talk of management of wealth. Whatever you speak against, you can never attract it. If you speak against this anointing, you can never attract it no matter how hard you pray. If you speak against him, our is more, you can never attract it, no matter how hard you pray. If you speak against the choristers who are singing, if you speak against their voice, there is no way you can ever do better. If that's criticism, nobody's saying you should not criticize. Criticize, but constructively. But if that criticism goes out of being constructive and the criticism becomes destructive trust me when I say to you you can never attract it you can never attract it so be guarded 
Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. And so, within the framework of our key passage, the Bible says the priests passed by, the Levites passed by, they left the Samaritan, and they left the, uh, 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 the man that was beaten by a robber. But when I was reading the commentary, you know one of the funny things I found? That man who was the victim, who was beaten and left half dead, that man is a Jew. That man is a Jew. He's not even a Samaritan. He's not even a Gentile. But one funny thing happened that it was the priests and the Levites were Jewish people. But it was a Samaritan. Samaritan. Sometimes our enemies are not far away from us. They are enemies within the household. Sometimes you want to move higher and higher. Someone somewhere within the same kindred and family saying, God forbid it that you grow and that you prosper. Over my dead body that you grow and that you prosper. Ah, anybody who don't say over your dead body upon your matter, they shall die. Anybody who say over their dead body before you will prosper upon this altar that I stand by the power of God who is the essence of goodness, they shall die. This is not about whether they repent or they do not repent. Now they use their mouth to talk up over their dead body. And if it is over their dead body, the ground will swallow them. And in swallowing them, you shall rise in the name of Jesus. And that was what happened to this man. But the beautiful thing here is, at the end of the day, hear how the likes of Irenaeus in France and Clement of Alexandria, hear what the kind of description they gave, the kind of interpretation they gave about this, uh, 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 this man. They didn't have that. Now, Irenaeus and Clement of Alexandria, they said something like this. They said the good Samaritan is a symbolism of Christ himself. Saving the fallen victim wounded with sin. The good Samaritan is a symbolism of Christ himself. Saving the fallen world, the victim wounded with sin. At this point, I will want to give four critical lessons from this passage. Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through to 37. I want to give four critical lessons, moral lessons. The first lesson is this. Believers need to recognize the sacred worth of all people. That is the first lesson. We all need to recognize that every human being is sacred and life is sacred. And if that is true, today I will be praying for women, for mothers. Women, single ladies and mothers, whether single mothers or mothers who are with their family or who have their husbands, this becomes a prayer point. Guard against making your womb the tomb of the innocent. Guard against it. Making your womb the tomb of the innocents. Guard against it. You know what I mean, right? Beautiful. You don't know what I mean. When a woman tries to make her womb the tomb of the innocents. Abortion. What they call in their language now, D and C. When you swallow pills in the name of wanting to prevent pregnancy, the womb now becomes the tomb of innocent lives. Life is sacred. That is the first thing we must learn. The second thing to be learned here is this. Guard against the danger of mechanical religion. Guard against the danger of mechanical religion. If all you do is come here and you celebrate Mass, the Lord be with you. Go in peace, the Mass is ended. I bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is one thing to be mechanical about what you are doing. And it is another thing to be spiritual and be within the internal frame of reference of what you are doing. These are two separate entities. Sorry with all due respect. There are so many of us priests who are guilty of this. We are so mechanical, very, very mechanical. This is not me praising Father Onyao, Father Wizi. 
when you have a priest who gives you program like this trust me they have seen much more and they want you to prosper if you like make when say they praise them for their fronts yes not be until they die before they praise person not be until they die yes I they praise them when you see them giving you programs like there are churches you go to the priest is ready to preach the word of God for five minutes and the parishioners are comfortable with it and the people are ready to make donations and contributions here for two hours and they are not tired but once the word of God begins to go past five minutes ah now wow you don't tell you don't tell if you don't preach word of God now yeah you won't preach them again now for markets if you don't preach them for church yeah you won't preach them I was in uh, Bagada some time ago and when I was engaged in that activity, you know, the people were are just like you guys, you know, Ajebo, Ajebo, Ajebo. And when I, I, I tried to, pr I, I brought them out of their shell. They said, Father, we didn't see this coming, but we enjoyed it. However, Father, it'd be like, you taste small. I said, eh, I taste small. Then, you know the first question I now asked the lady, I, I now asked her, I said, Madam, I need you to tell me the truth. Now church is over. Where are you going to now from here? She said, oh no, Father, I'm going home. What are you going to do? She said, I'll go sleep. I looked at her and I, shake, and I shook my head. I said, what a shame. Hear how the psalmist puts it. A day spent in the house of the Lord is better than a thousand years spent elsewhere. The psalmist went for that to say, the threshold of the house of God I prefer to the dwellings of the wicked. Ah! It is a call to goodness. It is a call to be a good Samaritan. Lesson number three we all need to learn from here is that show this. Okay? Lesson number three. Each and every one of us need to understand that even to our enemies, our perceived enemies, we should show them love and be good to them. The Samaritan, if he wanted to use that rift between the Samaritans and the Jews, he's not going to show the Jewish man any love. But he did show him love. He paid. He did not just only bound his wounds, but one of the things he did, he took him to the hospital, paid his bills, and he even gave an instruction. If there is anything extra, trust me when I say to you, I'm going to come back and I'll foot the bill. Charge him nothing. Nothing. I just want to show him love. That's it. I just want to show him love. And the very last lesson I want each and every one of us to hear is this. We should turn down or tune down the inclination of self-justification before God. If you hear me talk like this, that I speak like this does not make me holier than you. That I speak like this not, does not make me better than you. But I need to preach the word of God. And even as I speak like this, I'm also speaking to myself. We should tune down the inclination, our inclination, to what may lead us to get into self-justification and righteousness. That is what all of this is about. And that is why the word of God in 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, the Bible says, if anyone says, I love, but hates his brother, that person is a liar. For whoever does not love his brother, whom he can see, can never ever love God whom he cannot see. Is that true? Is that true? On this note, I want to bring my message now to a close. And this is how I will round up my message. The act of goodness, my dear friends, can never be too demanding. And the act of goodness can never be too much. Just in case you're about to execute something good and you are not so sure about that act of goodness, remember the ABCs of life. And the ABCs of life will now become a stinger and a reminder once again that you need to do good no matter your situation in life and what is the ABCs of life the ABCs of life determines your line of action and the A says accept life with all its beauty and challenges B 
Believe in yourself and believe in your dreams. C, change your thought pattern and mindset. D, determine to live the life of your dreams and do good no, no matter what. E, expect some obstacles on the way. But F, fan into flame the power of goodness even when you are failing. For failure is not an option. G, get God on your side with H have a heart of love a heart of goodness and a heart of humble spirit I inspire someone today and impact on that people or on those people you encounter while L let Jesus take the lead K keep keeping on strong and be L lover of the goodness and good deeds of life M make every moment and every day count in your life and never give up in doing good and on life itself because oh overcomers never look back when they are doing good p put your best faith forward and pray until something good happens to you because q quitters never win and winners never quit r the word of god says you should always run the race of life relentlessly and positively as s you strive towards salvation doing good wherever you go while t trusting in the lord because you you are using your wisdom talent and treasure touching lives everywhere and every time v value the limited time that you have on earth and w while waiting for god's directions and blessings x explain your lifestyle as you why yearn to achieve your destiny and the life of your dreams and be z zealous to touch many lives as possible and again let that zealousness lead you to the place of heaven and to the place of your eternity just remember the abc's of life the abc's of life just remember the abc's of life and that is what god today is inviting each and every one of us to do so my dear friends, today I pray for you. In the spirit of today's prayer, today's prayer, I will invite each and every one of you now to be on your feet. And while you are looking at Jesus here, all you should be saying to Jesus is, you imparted upon me yesterday. And today, I need you once again to help me with the grace to engage in acts of goodness. It, it, it can never be too expensive. It can never be too much. It can never be too much. We may not engage in this so very loud prayer and radical prayer today, but I just want you now to go into the deepest part of your heart. And while you are there, inside the deepest part of your heart, and your eyes are fixed on the blessed sacrament on Jesus who is present, just ask yourself the question, how many times since the beginning of this year have you been good? What is it that could be standing between you and your God's given destiny? In the past year, 2023, could it be that you were so insensitive and numb to the needs of other people? What exactly could be the factor responsible? This is a time now of going inside. A time of going inside. A time of going When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. When we do, why we do His good will. He abides with us still, and with all who we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. Sing it like a minute, everybody. Trust, trust and obey, everybody. Trust and obey. Oh, there is no, no way to be happy. Jesus. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. 
Jesus talking to you right now. Whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers, that you do unto And Jesus now said, When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. Oh, Jesus, now enter into the womb of my brother. I do not know who I'm praying for right now. At this point in time, I make a prophetic call. And if you are that child of Abraham, lift up those hands. May you enter into the home of your father. Enter into the home of your father. Enjoy the company of God. Enjoy the company of Jesus. Enjoy the companionship of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Enter. Now enter into the home of my father. It is so consoling and it is so comforting. Now enter into the home of my father. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And these rivers of living water, because it is touching somebody, and there is an impartation of goodness. And because of that impartation of goodness, Jesus is saying to you, Now enter into the home of my Father. Open your mouth and begin to talk to God and begin to say, I do not want to be insensitive. Help me, Jesus, to turn around my heart of being numb. My heart that is dead, oh God, because I want to enter into the kingdom of my Father. Oh, Jesus. Touch my heart, Lord. Transform my heart of stone and make it into a heart of flesh. Open your mouth and begin to talk to Jesus. Jesus, I need the grace to be able to do good. You have been imparted. You need the ability. And that is why he commands. I command you, whoever it is that you love, love your neighbor as yourself. In the commandments, in every commandment, there is an empowerment. And today, you are being empowered to do good. To do good. To do good. 
and because of your goodness your reward the eternal reward the reward of eternity that you shall enjoy sons and daughters of God shall be now enter into the home of my father. I want to hear everybody sing that aloud and say it like you mean it. Now enter into the home of my father. I want to pray for somebody here tonight. Do not sing yet. I want to pray for a living soul here tonight. May your act of goodness never bring you to a wretched end. You will do good for people. But in your goodness, your act of goodness will not lead you to a ruin and will not lead you to any form of disaster. In the name of Jesus. For every act of goodness you do, whether it is one act of goodness, you shall, repeat, you shall receive seven times of it. You shall receive seven blessings of that act of goodness. May your act of goodness not bring you disaster. May your act of goodness not bring you evil. May your act of goodness not bring you of timely death. In the name of Jesus. And because of that act of goodness, in Psalm 23 verse 6, he says, My goodness and mercy shall follow you. Oh, children of God, I do not know who I'm speaking to right now. Some of you have been a helper to somebody before. But you notice that after helping that person, your finances started dying. And if that is your story today, in this church, I beg God Almighty who is seated on the throne, that His goodness and mercy shall relocate you. Let Him begin to find you. Let Him begin to find you. In the name of Jesus. If by your act of kindness, if out of your act of compassion, if out of your act of goodness, they say that this shall be the last time you shall ever do anything good, may God clip their wings. May God render them impotent. May God render them powerless. No matter who they are, no matter where they are, they are in the north, they are in the south, they are in the east, they are in the west, they are in this church, they are outside this community, that's your place of work, that's your businesses. If because of your act of goodness, they say you shall not prosper, may God put them to shame. 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 Put them to shame. In the name of Jesus. May his goodness and mercy follow you. Let it follow you. The goodness and mercies of God shall follow you in the morning. He shall follow you in the afternoon. He shall follow you in the evening. He shall follow you in the night. He shall follow you in your sleeping. He shall follow you in your rising. He shall follow you in your going out. He shall follow you in your co coming in. I want to hear the child of Abraham shout Amen. Begin to unlock the gates of hell. Begin to unlock the pronouncements of the evil one. Begin to close that doors that they have laid upon. That they say, goodness and mercy shall, not, shall never follow you. The goodness and mercy shall never follow you. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Oh, sons and daughters of Zion, he shall follow you. And you shall be running away from goodness and mercy. You shall be running away from it. He shall locate you. He shall locate your family. In the name of Jesus. And Jesus was Satan. Now enter into the home of my father. Lift up your hands, everybody. I can see the goodness of the Lord. Jesus, at least for the gift of life. I can see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, Jesus. Who am I that you choose to love me this way, Jesus? I can see the goodness of the Lord. 
lift up those hands. I have seen the goodness of the Lord. Have you seen? I have seen the goodness of the Lord. Oh, who am I? for him. Oh, Father, we declare that we love you, that we, we love, love you. We By doing good, we declare everlasting love. Oh, Father, we declare. Oh, Jesus, that we love. That man, I love the man of Galilee. For he has done, for he has done so very much for me. If you know you have enjoyed it, begin to make this confession. some of those views if this altar is not enough. Turn it down a bit. I'm praying for you more especially because some of you because of your good deeds your husbands did not recognize it. And in their failure to recognize the good things that you have done for them. Sometimes by standing by their side even when the road is rough, you had an option to leave, but yet you still chose to stay. I want to bless you, those mothers who stood by their man through thick and thin. Even when it was rough, even when you had an option of aborting that child and you were able to remember that there are no unwanted families. That there is no child that is unwanted. And yet, not minding the social stigma, you still bore that child. And that child, I want to say to you, oh mothers, if there is anyone in this category, that child shall become your prize of blessing. And to those of you who stood through thick and thin by their husbands, I bless you tonight. I bless you mothers I bless you mothers that a home is good a house is good it is because of you mothers if a house is bad it is because of you mothers 
If the church is good and the church is powerful, it is because of you mothers. And today, because of this church, because of Onya, because of Wizzy, today, mothers, I bless you and I am using this altar to speak into your lives. May God mightily bless you. May God take away the pains of your hearts. That thing that brings tears to make tears run your, down your cheeks. Anytime you sit down and you think and you say, Oh Jesus, why, 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 why me? Irrespective of the good that you may have done. Oh, I pray for a transformation. May such hearts, heavy hearts, be taken off your shoulder. In Matthew 11, 28, it says, Come to me, all you who labor and have a burden, and I will give you rest. I pray today for a godly soul time. A godly soul time between you and Jesus himself. May you enjoy the rest that no man can give. In Luke chapter 14, verse 27, the Bible says, The peace that we give to you, O mothers, is not the kind of peace that the world will give. Oh! I do not know which mother I'm speaking to right now, but I do know that there is a mother here. As you are leaving this church, you will enjoy a fresh peace. A peace that is fresh, a peace that is renewal, a peace that will bring about heart of mind and tranquility to you. In the name of Jesus. Through you, life shall be lifted up. I can tell you, mother, say amen. Whether that life is inside your tummy, whether that life is a physical life already existing, whether it is the life of your husband, the life of your neighbor, through you, generations shall be lifted up. Mothers, you will never be a disaster to the church. You shall never be a disaster to your family. The Bible says, he who finds a good wife has found something good. Any man who finds a good wife, his days of life shall be lengthened. The days of the lives of your husbands and children shall be lengthened in the name of Jesus. In the ministry of Jesus, women have always been there. They've always been there. And today, all oh, you mothers, beautiful mothers, wonderful mothers, blessed mothers, when you call upon God, it shall be from your mouth to the ears of God. I call upon God, the monarch of the universe, to bring upon you divine visitation. May he bring upon you divine visitation. May he bring upon you divine encounter. You may be standing in the gap on behalf of your children. You may be standing in the gap on behalf of your husband. But tonight I want to say to you that as you stand in the gap of whoever it is, you are standing on, it shall be well with that person. It shall be well with that person. Oh! Ne chukuko ziegi. May God bless you. I pray not only for divine impartation, but I speak upon you the impartation of goodness. I speak upon you the impartation of life. I speak upon you the impartation of wealth. I speak upon you the impartations of virtue. And anyone who touches you touches fire. Anyone who touches you, touches fire. It is signed and sealed on this altar. It is decreed. And as I go around it, in the middle of this altar, so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Mothers, you have suffered a lot because of us. And trust me when I say to you, it shall not be in vain. It shall not be in vain. I know what it means, the gift of motherhood. I appreciate it so much. And that is why all you mothers, today your heart is connected to the heart of Jesus. And those of you who are widows, do not forget that God calls you his wife. And when you speak, God will reach out to you. For every mother's here, as your hands are highly lifted up, for every mother's here, upon your finances, upon your businesses, upon the source of your income. All these hands lifted up here as I touch them. I pray God Almighty 
to make the works of your hands fruitful in the name of Jesus fruitfulness shall locate you because the principle of motherhood is about the principle of multiplication you will multiply goodness you will multiply goodness you will multiply prosperity you will multiply greatness in the name of Jesus let the impartation of greatness follow you let it follow you let it follow you peace of mind you shall enjoy peace of health you shall enjoy peace of spirit you shall enjoy peace in your mental health you shall enjoy peace in that place of pain you shall enjoy in the name of Jesus it is well with you and it is well with the children you give birth to it is well with the husbands you have married it is well with your husbands to be in the name of Jesus. And those of you looking for the fruit of the womb, I use the word of God in Exodus 23, 26 to minister to you. To minister to you. The word of God. And that word of God says, anything that we call short, the life of a child in the process of coming into being, the Bible said there shall be no miscarriage in that in the land. And because it says there shall be no miscarriage, miscarriage shall be far from your wombs. It shall be far from your wombs. And I call upon the doctor of all doctors once again to touch that womb of yours. I speak fertility. I speak fruitfulness. By this time next year, you will carry your child and you will come to this altar and you shall dance. You will dance, you will dance, you will dance. I will dance like the Venus. I will dance. I will dance. I will dance like the Touch you. You should touch you. I will dance. I will dance. See as you come forward, just come forward to appreciate God. Make sure you dance well. 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 Make it faster. Make it faster. 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 One faster. I'm 
out your blessing and your blessings name them one by one you will see you will see that so much he has done you too much you too much you too much
Don't tell the next person, say, I know who I am. Let's go. Come on. Come on. How many of you know who you are here? Hey. We are the chosen generation. Come for to show his excellence. All are required. Announcements. Announcement number one. We are gradually winding up this program. Tomorrow, by the special grace of God, will be the second to the last day. Tomorrow, we'll be having almost like a full ministration. By this, I mean, because of the spirit of tomorrow's message, every one of us here is mandated to come to this church with a candlestick each. That same tomorrow, the youths and the children I will be praying for you specially, but after um, the candlelight ministration. I want to charge those of you in the band department. Look for a song befitting that will go into a candlelight ministration. I might do a kick up on that song, on that worship, but afterwards begin to think of something different. So please, tomorrow, when coming, if you come let you know, see chair outside the Godeo. Uh, now, see, say, by the day, now, as we don't they close, as we don't they close, the, it comes like, say, the church, the food, 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 the food. But when we start, it be like, say, that the beg, make una come. Now, say, I say, the beba. So, tomorrow, by the special grace of God, please and please, please and please, tomorrow, come with a candlestick each. Wait till I talk. Those of you are waiting for back, as then disengage speaker, I don't know whether they hear me. Make una tell me, wait till I talk. So try to be here tomorrow with a candlestick each. Not one candle representing family. Everybody go answer in Papa name. Come with a candlestick. If you have seven children, each of those your children will hold their candle. So everybody have different de destiny and different uniqueness. So tomorrow we go enter spiritual realm. This one we'll just do today na impactation. So we don't collect goodness. They say we go do good up where? Have you so? So tomorrow now it will be war for war. War for war. I want to hear you say that. War for war. Uh -huh. Because it is talking about destroying calamities. So any impending calamities for front, we go destroy them. Now they hear me so? So nine be tomorrow program. So make we not try day here tomorrow. Make we not try day here tomorrow. 
And when you go today, if you have neighbors who are living close to you and you drove down and now only you there inside your motor, begin the act of goodness from this church compound. If they don't get motor, carry them. Carry them, drop them for road. Then you finish your journey, go house. Let us be a good Samaritan. Tell the person standing by your side, be a good Samaritan. Be a good Samaritan. Amen. 2024, my year of peace. My year of peace, the Lord is my peace and salvation. May the Lord continue to strengthen us through Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters, because of tomorrow's program, everyone should fast. If you are on medication, please do not fast. If you are aged and below seven, please do not fast. So brothers and sisters, take note of this. And on Sunday is our love feast. Our love feast is on Sunday. The masses that you attend, any mass, whether you attend a 7 a.m. mass or 9 or 11, you are encouraged to come with something. At the end of each mass, the church wardens and also the volunteers will help to distribute all that we have brought to have our love feast. And the Lord is mercy, we sanctify it through Christ our Lord. Now, to, on Sunday will be the birthday of our dear father, Father Jay. So please let us remember him. On Sunday is his birthday. So let us remember him and ask God in his mercy to strengthen him through Christ our Lord. So thank you. Let us go. Wave your hands unto Jesus, everybody. Just wave your hands unto Jesus. Your walk of the Father. We are joined as we the Son. We are children of What did I do? 